Chapter 4 The Old Man of the Sea After their encounter with the sea dragon, Eric and his men looked at their ship Golden Dragon and saw that the monster had done much damage and that the water was flooding in at the stern. We must bail this water out, said Eric, or we shall not keep afloat for long. But how can we bail? cried his men. We have not one single bucket between us. We are lost for sure. Then we must use our helmets, said Eric, and he got down with his men and started to bail the water out of the golden dragon with his own helmet. But the more they bailed the water out, the more the water seemed to flood in. We shall sink before nightfall, whispered Eric's men one to the other. Unless we reach land, we are dead men, they said. Thorkild stood by the great oar at the back of the ship and steered. But I do not know where we are, he said to himself, nor have I any idea which direction there is land. I fear we are lost for sure. Just then, Thorkild saw a shape in the water, which looked as though it were following the boat. Thorkild watched and watched this shape, and it seemed to him that an old man was swimming alone in the sea. Hey there, called out Thorkild. Who are you, swimming alone in the icy waves so far from land? The old man looked up out of the water at Thorkild and laughed, but he said not a word. How do you swim so fast? asked Thorkild. Again the old man in the water looked up and laughed, but again he said not a word. Can you help us find land? asked Thorkild, for we are badly damaged and will sink before nightfall. At this the old man did not laugh. He looked up at Thorkild and said, I'll show you land, but if I do, one of you must come and join me in the icy waves. Thorkild felt a sudden cold to the marrow of his bones, for he knew then that this was the old man of the sea, and that to join him in the icy waves meant certain death. But he said to the old man of the sea, Show us where we can find land. But the old man of the sea laughed and replied, But which one of you will come and join me in the icy waves? Show us land, and I shall come and join you in the icy waves. When Thorkild had said the words, the old man of the sea laughed again, and took the great oar in his hand, and turned it until the golden dragon was heading due north. But Thorkild grieved in his mind, for he knew that the old man of the sea always took a life before he ever saved one. I am as good as dead, he said to himself, but at least my comrades will reach land. But still he grieved in his mind, because he knew the old man of the sea was full of tricks, and that no one could ever put his trust in him. Well, they sailed on like this for many hours, and every other hour Eric would look up from his bailing and say to Thorkild, Any sign of land? And Thorkild would reply, We are heading straight for it. And Eric would nod and encourage his men, and they would all bail faster as the water kept flooding in. At length, Thorkild leaned over the side again and shouted down to the old man of the sea, How much further? And the old man of the sea laughed loud and long and said, Far enough for you. And Thorkild looked towards the horizon and saw an island. Land ahead, cried Thorkild, and Eric and his men stood up and gave a mighty cheer. We are saved, said Eric. Tonight we shall celebrate and dry ourselves around a great fire, and we shall drink a toast to Thorkild, who steered us safe to dry land. And all his men gave another mighty cheer, but Thorkild looked grave and said, I shall not be with you. Then he explained to Eric how the old man of the sea had guided the boat to land, and that in return one of their number must go and join him in the icy waves. And since I made the bargain with the old man of the sea, said Thorkild, it is right that I go and join him in the icy waves. Just then they all heard the sound of laughter, and they looked over the side and saw the old man of the sea grinning up at them. Well, he said, I'm waiting for you. You need wait no longer, said Thorkild, and he got up to go. But Eric's men said to Thorkild, Don't go, it will be death to join him in the icy waves, and we are almost at land. But Thorkild replied, No, the old man of the sea has kept his side of the bargain. I must now keep mine. And he stood up on the side of the golden dragon, about to throw himself into the icy waves. Then Eric took Thorkild's arm and said, The old man of the sea is full of tricks. Wait until we see this island he has brought us to, and then you may go and join him in the icy waves. At which words Thorkild nodded and stepped back into the boat. I am waiting for you, cried the old man of the sea, or aren't you going to keep your side of the bargain? And his eyes glinted wickeder and trickier than ever. Have no fear, 
replied Thorkild. I shall keep my side of the bargain, for you have kept yours. Then come and join me in the icy waves, grinned the old man of the sea. First may I fetch some bacon so that we may eat together, said Thorkild. Very well, said the old man of the sea, and he waited while Thorkild took down a large flitch of bacon that hung around the mast and tied it around his waist. At this the old man of the sea laughed a loud laugh, then said, I'm waiting for you. Now come and join me in the icy waves. First, may I sharpen my knife so I could cut the bacon, said Thorkild. Very well, said the old man of the sea, and he waited, while Thorkild took a whetstone from under his seat and began to sharpen his knife until it shone. Then the old man of the sea laughed, twice as loud and long, and said, Well, I'm waiting for you. Now come and join me in the icy waves. One last thing, said Thorkild. What is it? cried the old man of the sea. I need some rope, said Thorkild, to hang my bacon up in your kitchen in the icy waves. Well, at this the old man of the sea laughed three times as loud and long and said, Very well. So Thorkild tied a length of rope around his waist and said, Now I am quite ready to join you in the icy waves. And he climbed onto the side of the golden dragon and prepared to jump. But just then, one of Eric's men shouted out, It's a trick! and he pointed to the island which they had reached by now. And they all saw it wasn't an island at all, but a gigantic narwhal, four times as long as Golden Dragon, and four times as high as her main mast. Old man of the sea, called out Thorkild, you didn't keep your side of the bargain, but I shall keep mine. And before anyone could stop him, he had leapt off the side of the Golden Dragon and joined the old man of the sea in the icy waves. Thorkild, cried Eric. The sea is too cold, and the old man of the sea is too tricky. You will die for sure. But while they had been talking, Thorkild had taken the flitch of bacon and rubbed its grease all over himself, so that the icy waters ran off his skin like water off a duck's back. And when he reached the old man of the sea, he grabbed him round his skinny neck and took his newly sharpened knife and cut off his beard with one slice. Then he pulled on the rope, which he had round his waist, and because he'd fixed the other end to the mast, he was able to pull himself back on board before the old man of the sea could drag him back under. Then Thorkild nailed the old man of the sea's beard to the mainmast, and they all laughed and pointed at it. And the old man of the sea was so furious and so ashamed that he swam off without another word, and the gigantic narwhal followed after him. When the great creature had gone, Eric and his men saw on the distant horizon a tiny speck of land. Night had fallen by the time they reached it, but they rowed ashore and lit a fire on the beach, and many was the toast they drank that night to Thorkild, who had not only steered them safe to land, but had become the first person ever to out-trick the old man of the sea. <laughs>